Hey, I'm David Levin, and this is Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes TV stories you wouldn't have known from the people who were there. Before we get started, please subscribe, and so you never miss an episode, click the bell icon. Today, I'm bringing you one of my favorite interviews from The Vault. Now, I interviewed Rue McClanahan way back in the late 2000s, just a few years before she passed away at the age of 76. Rue was a hugely popular actress, having starred on Broadway, in movies, and in dozens and dozens of guest appearances on your favorite TV shows. But she was best known for her roles on three popular sitcoms, as Aunt Fran on Mama's Family, and of course, co-starring with her friend B. Arthur on two hit shows. First, Maud on CBS that ran for six seasons, and later Golden Girls, which ran for, on NBC for seven seasons before spinning off into Golden Palace. Our conversation was wide-ranging, covering a great deal of her career. Today, Rue talks about meeting Norman Lear, how she got her first guest shot on All in the Family, how she talked the great theatrical director and producer Joseph Papp into letting her out of a contract to do a New York Broadway show so that she could go to Hollywood, get cast on Maud, and work with the great Norman Lear. Plus, what she learned from B. Arthur and the difference between acting on stage and acting in a sitcom. Here is the late, great Rue McClanahan. Oh, he's, he's one of my heroes. How did you, uh, when did you meet him, Norman Lear? I met him at the opening night party of an off-Broadway play I just opened in called Tonight in Living Color by Pete Gurney, who was as yet unknown. This was in 1969. And Norman's son-in-law was one of the producers. So he was there. And uh, he complimented me very highly on my work and said he hoped he could hire me someday. Well, that'd be nice. And he was going to do that movie, a marvelous movie called Cold Turkey, about this whole town that stopped smoking. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? And then he said he was going on to uh, Hollywood to get into TV production. And of course, it was two years later that All in the Family made that shatteringly successful debut. Unbelievable, was it? I was, I was about to say, actually, he was never heard from again. But Never heard from again, except over and over and over. <laughs> and then he did, in 72, he did hire me to do uh, an All in the Family guest shot and to stay out there at the time and do this neighbor of this lady named Maud, this new show. It was in February of 72 then. That was uh, almost three years after he saw Tonight in Living Color. That I got a call to come out and do audition for the director of an All in the Family episode. And I was in a I was in a Joseph Papp play at the time on Broadway, Sticks and Bones. And I'd knocked myself out to get into a Joseph Papp production. I finally was in one. And now I'm this I'm actually standing by for Elizabeth Wilson. But his devil plan, Joseph Papp, was to have me stand by and then take over because she was leaving. So I'm, I'm standing by. In fact, I'd started playing it. I'd just gone in and I'd only played it a couple of weeks. And he said, I'm not going to let you out after a couple of weeks to go do a TV show. So I went out and did a reading of that part for the director. I went out on, you know, we don't play Monday nights. So I flew out Monday morning, did the reading, flew back for the Tuesday night performance. And uh, they loved it, and, and I couldn't do it. So they said they'd look for another role for me. And I thought, oh, yeah, they always say that, and it never happens. Well, it did happen. About a month later, they called me again and said, we have another episode of All in the Family with Vincent Gardenia. And I'd worked with Vincent in, we'd done uh, Death for Salesman together. When I was 31, I played Linda Lohman, Death for Salesman, really. But I loved Vincent, loved working with him. And Joseph Papp now said, all right, you've played six weeks, I'll let you out for a week. Five days to go shoot that TV, that's all. So I'm out there, and don't you know, on about the third day, then Norman Lear comes to me and says, 
I have this new show that I'm shooting called Maud. We've just started, and we need the neighbor, the best friend of Maud. Vivian is her name. Uh, could you, would you like to stay and play that? And they overlapped, so I'd have to rehearse both play, both TV shows at the same time. Record all the family, and then stay an extra four days, I think it was, or three days. Well, it was four days because the weekend came in there to do Maud. Well, I called Joseph Pab. I said, Mr. Pab, <laughs> this is Rue McClanahan. I, I know you let me out to go to Maryland and do the Rhymers of Eldridge for PBS, and I know you let me out to come out here to do All in the Family. I'd like to stay an extra four days and do Norman's new show, Maud. Rue, he said, I have never let anyone out of a play in my life. You're the first one, and now you're asking me for the third out. I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. When I get back, I'll understudy the part. My understudy can keep playing it. He said, you want it that bad? I said, yes. He said, all right, that's the deal. When you get back, you can be the understudy. Wow. So I came back and I understudied for, I don't know, a few weeks. The damn thing closed. So I didn't miss much. <laughs> wow, lucky you took the, uh, took the gamble. Then, well, it wasn't a gamble. Oh, I wanted to work for Norman Lear. I knew he was, he was a giant. And uh, then he called me back to do another one that summer. And while I was out there, that's, no, it was that fall. I just bought a house in Closter, New Jersey. Just moved into this house with an acre. Mm. Beautiful, gorgeous. So he said, uh, while I was out there doing the second one, he said, how would you like to make this? No, he called when I got back. He said, how would you like to make this a running role? Play it every week. Wow. You want to move to California? I said, sure, I want to move to California. I just bought my first house in New Jersey. Of course, I'll be right out. So I went out and started the following July as a regular on the second year. Wow. Oh, that was such a break. What was it like working on the set of, of one of Norman's shows? Oh, Norman is a genius, a true genius. He really is. He's that smart. And a personality that you just kill for. He's adorable. He's so easy to get along with and so self-effacing and funny. And, uh, you know, the person at the top always sets the tone for the rest of the organization because they hire the right people who hire the right people. And it, it, it makes a big difference who's running the show. And he made it a joy, as well as Bill Macy and Conrad Bain and B. Arthur. And at first it was Esther Roll and Adrian Barbeau, and then it was, uh, um, oh, my goodness gracious, Esther went on to do her own show. Norman created a spinoff for her, and we had uh, Badly, Hermione Badly came in to play, <laughs> to play the Cockney housekeeper. Oh, what a group, what a group. I loved it. I learned so much from B. Arthur about TV comedy timing. Um, it, I, I said that first year, you know, this is very akin to acting, very similar to acting. Uh, because it's, it's more like acting than making a movie is, because you get to shoot it in sequence. And it's less like acting than acting on the stage is, because you have to wait that split second before you reply. Your comedy timing is just a little different while the camera gets on you. It's not instantaneous, you know? And you learn to Give it just that moment before you react. Well, I also learned from her that year about going out on a limb, going farther. Now, I'd been taught this by some very good acting teachers, one particular one. Go, and I'd read it about Olivier. He always said, or he said once, the first day of rehearsal, 
jump in just as if you're jumping into a pool of ice cold water. Just go for it. And you have to go bigger than you're eventually going to play it in order to be able to trim it and refine it. Because if you don't, you never really get to a point you want to reach, you know, in comedy. Right. Or even in, even in tragedy. You really have to go out to the end of the limb. Next time, Rue reminisces about some of the great episodes of Maud, the controversies, dealing with kinky sex in 1970s primetime TV, the famous facelift scene, Walter's alcoholism, and of course, the infamous abortion episode of Maud. Till then, what was your favorite Rue McClanahan role? Let us know in the comments. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.